Hi guys, it's Satch 110. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. The first official video that I wanted to do in my new space is this one. Yes, I did an introductory video saying that I was back, but I wanted to do an actual video in my new perfume space, and this is what it's gonna be. Since I've had a little bit of a break and I moved house and I tried to get trying to get myself settled into every nook and cranny of this new house, I've been backed up with things that I've been trying. So this video is just going to be a chit chat and for me to tell you about some of the things I've been sent recently. Uh, some brands I know, some brands I don't know, and just to see if any of them pique your interest. So I've been having fun trying them now that I've started to settle. I've actually been wearing them and getting to know them. I will put links below to all of these companies. Um, and yeah, just for transparency, I was sent these things. Some of them a month ago, some of them two. I've been backed up. So here we go, anyway, let's begin. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is probably my favorite on the list, and it's this big giant thing. This came from an English brand that I really, really like. They're called Ruth Marstenbrook. I've talked about them before. They're a very small family-run perfume company. Ruth and her son, Nick. I am obsessed with two of her perfumes already. Utterly obsessed with them. I have multiple backups of them. But recently they sent me an email because they were launching three new perfumes separate from their main line. And they said it was gonna be a different direction, not like the, the original five that they have. And I think they call it Perfume VIP Team or something like that. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, they wanted my feedback. They sent three, the three samples with a form and how they made me feel and what did I think and which one was my favorite. And lo and behold, my favorite one came in the post. So their main line is great. Their main line is very strong, powerful, punchy perfumes. This new line, I think it's called The Magic of Nature. Hmm, I read about it. I've got a lot of information to remember for this video, so. Yeah, so cute, it came with a little note and everything. It said, Dear Thomas, thank you for your feedback on our new fragrances and being part of our very important perfume, perfume team. We hope you enjoy the very first bottles of Gaia. And I'm pretty sure it's called The Magic of Nature. I'll post a link. So there's three. One is based around chamomile, one is based around mint, and one is based around lavender. They are designed to be layered as well. And my favorite one was the chamomile one and it's called Gaia. So I'll put it here for you to see. Still figuring out the lighting in my new room, bear with me. And the chamomile comes from a farm, I think, somewhere up north. And I, I feel like it's blue chamomile because if you look at the, the actual perfume itself, hold on. Anyway, it's this little bottle here and it's kind of blue liquid. And this one is really beautiful. I wore it for the whole day the other day. I'm going to spray it on myself now. Oh, I did have blotters, but I can't resist this one. They call it a fresh floral tea. So it's obviously chamomile. It's got green tea, patchouli, bergamot, rosewood as well. Uh, yeah, Pate's Farm in Norfolk. That's where the chamomile oil comes from. And I'm really bummed because I opened this when I was still unpacking and it did come with this little roller boil, ball oil of pure chamomile. And it was really beautiful. It was like blue on my skin. That's why I think it might be Roman blue chamomile. I'm not sure. Anyway, this perfume is <clears throat> airy and light. And I posted it in my group recently and I said that it kind of smelled like chamomile tea, but with baby's bum added in. So it's got this, at first it's got that almost kind of camphorousness. I, I, I'm not sure if it's even camphor, but there is that twinge that chamomile gives you. It's that almost kind of sharp, Ooh, like something a bit rough, but then there's this lovely powderiness as well. It's nothing like iris or, um, you know, like violety powder, but it's got this kind of airy innocence about it. What I will say is these perfumes, while they do feel unique and they're really cool, they're not like the other line. I think they're a much more gentle approach to perfumery. I only got a couple of hours longevity out of this, maybe two or three. So I did have to apply it quite a lot throughout the day, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it smells so lovely really. And I can imagine if you maybe put a couple of them on together, uh, it would be fantastic. But I just really like this one that much that I'm just gonna continue to wear this one. There is samples of the other ones in here as well, but I have tried them. So the mint one's called Zephyr and 
dropping things on the floor. The lavender one is called Marlin. So I'm actually going to wear all three of them one day together. But for now, if you if you like Ruth Marstenbrook, I am personally a huge fan, especially of those two perfumes. The one is right behind me down here. Oh, I just love it. Signature and Amarosa are my two favourites. This is a nice cruelty vegan you know, vegan, cruelty-free, vegan, more naturalistic set of perfumes to come from Ruth Marstenbrook, who knows how to make really potent perfumes. I mean, her signature one lasts on me probably 18 hours plus. It's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, someone that is into aromatherapy type scents, uh, but with a lot more finesse than a, an aromatherapy blend because Ruth is a master of her craft. That's Gaia by Ruth Marstenbrook. I'm gonna move on because I've got a few things to get, get through. But thank you so much, Ruth and Nick, for sending me this. I'm always gonna be a fan of you guys uh, and excited to see what you're gonna do next. The next one is from And Fragrance. If you don't know who And Fragrance are, they are a perfume company that is owned by a man called Simon Constantine. He is the son of the owner of Lush. He was a, one of the main perfumers for Lush and he still is, I believe. Uh, he's made a lot of them. They've recently released a new perfume and it's called Far. So I'll show you this. All of their perfumes have an A in the name. There's Sand, there's Frank, there's Bean. Bean is actually my favorite. It's their, um, their Tonka perfume. But this one, I actually opened this um, when I went to see my brother and we smelled it together and both of us said the same thing. We said, oh, it smells like a lemon cheesecake. And when I went onto Anne's website, that's exactly what they say. They say it's like a sexy, uh, luxurious lemon cheesecake. So this perfume is yuzu and lime. They don't really say much more about what's in there, but it definitely has, it takes me back to my first ever home economics class at school, really showing my age there by saying home economics. I'm sure it's not even called that anymore and hasn't been for probably two decades. I don't know. But yeah, it's got this, subtle buttery biscuitiness about it without it being fully gourmand it's just a touch gourmand and it really lets the user and lime shine and the reason it's called far is because their website says when you think of yuzu and lime you think of faraway places like japan and thailand but they actually get their yuzu oil from a place in portugal which isn't too far from the uk um, the main thing about this brand is they very much, all of their perfumes help to sustain small businesses or small farms or small plantations all over the world. And this one is a farm that often gets devastated by, or the area gets devastated by wildfires and things like that. But this farm actually produces yuzu and lime oil for very fancy restaurants in the area. <clears throat> so and have gone in and said, we will also buy your limes and your, your, your yuzus and I guess it helps sustain them, it helps them recover from bad things that happen to them. That's kind of the gist, you get what I'm talking about, right? Anyway, as far as the fragrance goes, it feels a bit lemongrassy, it feels like a biscuit soaked in lemongrass, but not one of those overly biscuity, I smell like food, it's just a touch of that. And it's really fun and I'm actually going to gift this to my brother because he really, really liked it. It's more his style than mine. So yeah, this is Far by And Fragrance and they sent me a, um, a 10 mil one, which my brother's used quite a bit of already, you can see. Yeah, my brother's already used quite a bit of that one, as you can see. This will be going back to him because he loves it. So yeah, that's Far by And Fragrance. Link below. The next one was a bottle that was sent to me by a brand new London brand called Imani Vasek. Can you see this? They reached out to me and said, do you want to try our perfume? I said, sure, why not? I always say that. I always, I want to try everything. I, 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 nothing gets counted out in my books. Not on Arch One Mono's channel. No, no, no. Um, I said, sure, if, if, I, if I like it and I think it's cool, then I'll definitely talk about it or, you know, do something. Anyway, the other day, it was a really hot day. I wore this fragrance all day. They have one perfume and it comes in a 100ml bottle. It came really beautifully packaged. It came with a, an actual kind of wax seal on it. You know, one of those old school wax seals. Uh, I think the, the, the box packaging is actually a little bit nicer than the bottle. This isn't anything bad, but here's the bottle. It's called Heart's Desire. And I really enjoyed wearing this the other day. It's, it's a 100ml one they sent me. God, the reflection is terrible, I'm really sorry. So yeah, it's called Heart's Desire. 
And <clears throat> what can I say about this one? I would say I've smelled it before. I wouldn't say it's anything uh, massively groundbreaking. What I will say is if you like Christian Dior's J'adore perfume, I think it's a really nice alternative to that because it is mainly centered around Jasmine, but it's not as screechy as J'adore. J'adore can be known for being a little bit, you know, I love J'adore, but it can be a little bit sharp, a little bit screechy, a little bit aggressive. This one's like a J'adore, but with the edges softened a little bit. It feels a bit more musky than J'adore does. I'm not saying it's a dupe by any means, but when you have a, a fragrance that's that type of jasmine in this kind of setting, you immediately are just gonna go to the one that, that you're easy to, that's easy to reference, right? So if you like J'adore, I think this is probably less in terms of monetary, the price. But again, I'll put a link below. I just really enjoyed this. I sprayed a lot of it <coughs> all day, um, but I could smell it on my clothes for a really long time. I didn't, uh, unfortunately I didn't do a full, let's wear it once and do the whole longevity test. But in terms of the way it smells, I think it's pretty cool and I'm definitely gonna keep it and wear it when I, I want a Jasmine day. So it's by, yeah, Imani Vasek. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. Somebody in my group actually told me how to pronounce it because it might be a, Slavic name? Uh, yeah, the Heart's Desire by Imani Vasek. Something else I tried. Mm, the jasmine in it's nice. It's just verging on being a touch indolic, but then it's just softened and cleaned up a lot by this muskiness. But yeah, I like it. The next one was a really exciting one. There is a UK brand called Papillon Artisan. Pa uh, Pap Papillon Artisan, I cannot speak. I am really tired. <laughs> today. Doesn't matter. Ignore me. You can't really ignore me. I'm right in front of your face. Hi. Anyway, Papillon Artisan Perfumes. The owner of the brand is a very lovely lady called Liz. I own one of her perfumes already and I really like quite a few of the others. She's just released a new perfume and it's called Hera. It's this one. She sent me a sample. Liz is really good with, uh, I've talked about her before, but she's really good with that sort of vintage rough style. She's got it down to a T. She has quite a big fan base, not just because of her perfumes, but because of her as well, because she's just this goddess woman from another planet who owns this owl and she's just really cool. But anyway, she's a very talented perfumer. And this one, I love, I've tried this on my skin three or four times now, but I'm gonna just put it on the card for review purposes. Oh gosh, so if you if you know her perfumes, I'll say this first. This is like, two of her perfumes had a love child. It's like Salome and it's like Angelique put together. Salome is the most aggressive jasmine perfume I've ever smelled and I absolutely love it and I want it. And then Angelique is this very gentle iris um kind of dusty beautiful soft iris this has all the goodness of both of those put into one and they temper each other really really well it's like the jasmine wants to shout but the iris says no and then the iris is down here being all soft and the jasmine says hey come up here and be with the loud people that's kind of what's happening when i smell this and it's so balanced it's so perfectly balanced that neither one wins the argument so the notes are Jasmine, Orange Blossom, Ylang Ylang, Rose de Mai, Oris, Narcissus, Heliotrope, Ambrette and Musk. There's usually an element of animalicness or muskiness in Liz's perfumes. I think that's probably why I like them. But this is just that, oh, this is one of those ones where you can feel everything. The Jasmine and the Iris are the things that my nose focuses on, but there is definitely Ylang in here and there's definitely Rose as well. Oh, it's really, really good. This has to go on my wish list. I can see someone wearing this at a wedding that was kind of a bit of a badass wedding, you know, not like a classic one, one that's just got a bit of an edge. But yeah, this is Hera and once again, Liz has knocked it out of the park. I'll put a link to her website because if you like vintage, go and check her out for sure. Especially Bengal Rouge, one of the best ambers I've ever smelled. And thank you, Liz, for this sample, of course. Yay, as always. I'm going to choose the perfect time to fully wear this and I'm going to wear the whole thing. Done. No looking back. 
So the next three samples I was sent is by a Swiss brand actually, which is quite exciting because I don't know many Swiss brands, a few, but not too many. This one's called Per Noir, and this brand was started by two friends actually that I think grew up in the same area and both shared a love of fragrance. So they decided to start a perfume company. They had three fragrances at the time of sending, but they've actually got four now, but I still have the three. And I was really impressed by these. I was impressed mainly by the feeling of them and the richness of the materials and the blending. So two of them are ambers and then one is a freshy. I'm just gonna see if I can remember which ones are which now. So I'll start with this one, it's called Tierra. Sorry, I just had to go and get my reference material because I'm talking about so many different brands and there's a lot of detail and I don't wanna miss anything out. So Tierra is the one that means earth and this perfume is inspired by Latin America, vibrant culture, being at home, uh, dancing parties. And this one of the two is, like I said, both of the two ambers are on the darker side. They're not super sweet. This one is a boozy one. This one is um, aged rum, vanilla, Colombian spices, benzoin, red berries and oud. So they don't say amber, but there's a lot of things in both of them that contribute to them smelling ambery. So this has got like a, a, it's almost like a stewed fruit amber with a big woody streak going through it. And it's a dark gloopy amber. It's really nice. There's something in it that's, Verging on unpleasant, it, it kind of feels like spikenard to me. I know they don't say that, I'm just going to say what, what notes conjure up in my brain. There's something almost spikenard about it, and spikenard to me has this almost unpleasant, like sweaty foot smell. <laughs> I don't want you to put that off of this perfume, because when it's on your skin it doesn't really feel like that for very long. But yeah, this is a drunk amber. It's amber with... <laughs> amber is drunk. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a dark, boozy amber with a, a, like a shoot of oud going through it. I don't really feel the berries, but yeah, it's cool and it feels very well put together and you can feel the richness of the materials and that's always a win for me. When something feels like it's been very well thought out and everything's perfectly placed. So as soon as I smelled it, I knew that I liked this brand. So let me talk about the next one. So the next one's called Massa. And Masar is the Arabic word for path. It's about finding oneself. It's about finding your true path. Uh, and again, it's an amber. I'm not sure too much about the depth of the meaning. That's something I always want to sit with the, with the brand and talk about face to face, but I don't always have time. Uh, but you can read about them on their site anyway. This is my favorite of the three. It's the other amber, the other dark amber. This one's really cool. This is, let me read you the notes for this one. It's yuzu, ozonic notes, amber, labdanum, honey, tobacco, vanilla, rosewood, sandalwood, and animalic notes. So this is, take away the booze from the other one and add loads more wood into it. So I can really feel rosewood in this one. It's amber with a huge emphasis on wood. So I really, really like it for that. It's a dark amber again. It's got almost like a something a little bit menthol eucalyptus going on in it but not <laughs> like it's not exactly eucalyptus but it's got that feeling that sort of nose tingly feeling in amongst this amber and i can really smell labdanum and i can smell sandalwood a lot as well there's a lot of prominent things going on in this one all sitting on top of this dark amber accord and this is definitely the winner for me it's mysterious a little bit. I've not smelled an amber quite like this before. If I had to put it close to something, there's one of the Cana Barcelona perfumes that I think is called Botafumiro. How did I even remember that? Being this tired, I don't know. But yeah, it's weird for me to have um, ozonic and citrus notes in something that's so gloopy, ambery and dark. It's quite interesting. I don't really feel yuzu, but there's definitely a touch ozonic here. For me, really, it's about labdanum. Labdanum infused into an already labdanum-based amber accord and then uh, add in a whole bunch of different woods, rich woods and sultry woods. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna talk about the last one, which happens to be my least favorite. 
Sorry guys. This one is called Vitias. Vitya. Or maybe it's Vitias. I don't know. It's, it's Vitias anyway. <laughs> this one is um, a freshie. And it's probably the reason. I'm a little bit biased, but I'm still going to tell you how it smells to me. This one's about offering a piece of your soul to another individual. It's one of the deepest commitments you can offer. Vitias is the name of the deepest known point on this earth, located in the Marina Trench in the Pacific Ocean, which is why it's a freshie. This one is bergamot, lime, pink pepper, black pepper, angelica root, iris, blonde woods, guyac wood, marine note, amber, marine notes, ambergris, and white musk. The reason this one is my least favourite is because it's got quite a big emphasis on marine and citrus and I do, I have smelled stuff like this before. It's not as unique as the other two uh, and I smelled this one third so I, I was already, oh, oh, if I'd have smelled this one first it might have been different but you can definitely feel citrus on a kind of salty marine background and like I said, I have tried it, but a lot of people love those freshies. The amount of people I talk to and I say, what kind of perfumes do you like? And they say, fresh. This one's gonna be for them. It's aquatic. It's got a kind of greenery going on. It could almost be like a t teeny tiny bit of a seaweed type feeling. And then punchy citruses. So I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Uh, that's Pernoir, Noir. And I would be interested to smell their fourth perfume because two out of three ain't bad. The next fragrance is one to come from the German brand Der Duft. I've talked about these guys on my channel before. I've done a spotlight, I think, and I've reviewed a couple of them individually. My favorite one by them is called Pride, and I also love their one called Grass. They're owned by a guy called Ansem Skogsgaard. <laughs> And so I'm probably going to say your name wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, they, who is a perfumer. And some is a, a perfumer himself, but he also, there's another guy as well that owns a company. I forget his name. They commission other perfumers as well to work with them to release perfumes under their brand name. So they've worked with Prin Lomros as well. They've worked with Miguel Matos. This time it's the turn of Freddie Albrighton. Freddie Albrighton has made a perfume for them. If you don't know who he is, I'll give you a little bit of a story about me. He used to be my favorite perfume reviewer. He did used to have a YouTube channel. They were always in black and white, pretty cool guy, gauges, tattoos. He went on to pursue his actual career of being a tattoo artist and he's a pretty darn good one. If you just look up Freddie Albrighton's tattoos, he's amazing anyway. He's always had this love for perfume. He started his own line and now he's done one with Der Duft. It's called Canvas and this got sent to me as a sample recently along with all of their other ones. And I read a little bit about the inspiration. Obviously canvas, maybe something to do with tattooing because skin is a canvas. But anyway, Freddie wanted it to be about ink. He started thinking about ink. That was his inspiration. And then when he thought of ink, he thought of this kind of licorice type thing. And that's really what the fragrance is about. The notes are green apple, raspberry, rhubarb, licorice, anise, honey, musk, basil, pink pepper, seaweed, peony, geranium, rose, vetiver, and patchouli. So, it is a very odd mix. It's really, I would say that this is pushing into avant-garde perfumery for me. It's not unpleasant, but it's an animalic, licorice perfume it's also got anise right and anise and licorice kind of hand in hand that's the main focus of it for me it's a little bit rough i might put this one on my I, I wore this in bed the other night strange place to try a new perfume because you know when you're going to sleep but whatever <laughs> i did it anyway it's it's unusual I, w I wouldn't say it's pleasant by any means but niche perfumery isn't always pleasant it's not about the pretty pretty you know it's different. Niche perfumery is like, let's say couture fashion. They're not always wearable and they're always a bit, ooh, what's that? <laughs> Would you wear that? I appreciate it. I can feel, it, it, I, it's gonna sound negative, but it's almost like a clash. I, I wouldn't say it's harmonious and I don't know if that's what Freddie meant to be doing with this. But if you like unusual, this is a, an almost aquatic, animalic, licorice with some gentle muskiness and florals that I can't really pick out 
If any, I would say that I can smell geranium more than any of the others, because geranium is the most punchy, even though that's leaves instead of flowers. Hmm. Very detailed video I have to th do here, guys. Very detailed. With geranium, they actually distill the leaves, I think, and not the flowers. So it's not the flower that I'm smelling, it's the leaf. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Tricky one to describe. Not my favourite thing that I was sent, but I have tried Freddie's own perfumes and loved a couple of them. You gotta like licorice. You really, really have to like licorice to like this. Anyway, guys, that's it. It was a lot of details, I'm sorry, but this is all stuff that I've been trying and wearing recently. Regular reviewing will resume soon, but I just, all of these things have been niggling away at me and I've been wanting to talk about them for a while. If, if any of these things piqued your interest, let me know in the comments which one. Have you tried any of them? What did you think of it? I'd be interested to see. That's it, a bunch of stuff. Hope you like this video. I will be back soon with another one. I'm Alex Romano, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.